Hi everyone, welcome back to the third video of this week lecture. So for this video, we're gonna discuss on the expression profile of pharmacokinetic interaction. So most of the drugs are excreted either in the bowel or in the urine. Some of the drugs can be excreted through the lung, especially the volatile drugs. So interactions can occur when the drugs interfere when there are some changes in the urinary defects, changes in the active renal tubal secretions, changes in the renal blood flow, as well as the biliary excretion and enterohepatic shunt, as well as the drug transporter proteins. In the elimination interaction, I would like you to have a look in this diagram first. So the blood that entering the kidney is delivered to the glomeruli of the tubules where the molecule that is small enough to pass across the pores of these glomerular membranes are filtered to into the lumen of these tubules. For the larger molecules such as uh, plasma proteins and blood cells are retained in these blood vessels. So this blood then flows to the other parts of these kidney tubules where the drugs are and also their metabolites are removed, secreted or reabsorbed into the tubular free tract by the active and passive transport system. So this interaction can occur when the drugs interfere with kidney tubular fluid pH. As I mentioned earlier, changes in pH in the gut gastrointestinal will affect the drug absorption in the gut. It also happens in this renal system. So I would like you to see in this diagram. Passive reabsorption of drugs depends on the extent to which the drug exists in the non-ionized lipid soluble form. Only the non-ionized lipid soluble forms able to diffuse back through this tubular cell membrane. Thus, at alkaline pH, weakly acidic drugs, at alkaline pH, weakly acidic drug exist as ionized lipid insoluble molecules, which are unable to diffuse into these tubal cells and will therefore be lost in the urine. The renal clearance of this drug is increased if the urine is made more alkaline. Conversely, the clearance of weak base is higher in the acid urine. So the drugs that has strong acid and strong base are completely ionized over the physiological range of urinary pH. So there are no changes or not affected with any changes in the renal pH. So the most common clinical practice that used for it is the urine alkalinization or urine acidification. So urine alkalinization has been used as a means of increasing drug elimination in poisoning with salicylate and urine acidification for use in the amphetamine poisoning. Drugs that use the same active transport system in the kidney tubules can compete with one another for excretion. So this competition between drugs can be used as one of the therapeutic advantage. So uh, one of the example is the probinacid, which will be given to increase the plasma concentration of penicillin, which is penicillin is one of the antibiotics. So once this probinacid inhibit the organic anionic transporter, it will delay the renal excretion of the penicillin, which lead to maximum post antibiotic effect of these drugs. But in contrast, in other hand, propenicid and aspirin also inhibit the renal secretion of many other anionic drugs via this organic anionic transporter. This phenomenon can cause life-threatening due to increase the metrotrazate toxicity. If patients who are taking metrotrazate, which are given salicylate or NSAID at the same time, the dose of metrotrazate should be closely monitored. Another factor that affect this elimination interaction is the changes in renal blood flow. So the blood flow through the kidney is partially controlled by the production of renal vasodilatory prostaglandin. 
So this prostaglandin synthase inhibitors such as NSAID and indomethacin will reduce the renal excretion of lithium and subsequent rise in the plasma level. Another factor that causes elimination interaction is the biliary excretion and enterohepatic shunt. A number of drugs that are excreted unchanged or known as prodrug or conjugated in the bile by this gut flora which metabolize back to the parent compound and further can cause reabsorb to the blood system which further will cause induce the prolonged half-life of the prodrugs. So one of the most common known prodrug is the ethinyl estradiol which is the prodrug of the estrogen. So once it be given concomitantly with the antibiotics, the antibiotic will kill the microbial in this gut flora. So it will reduce the enterohepatic circulation of ethinyl estradiol conjugates which will cause reducing the circulating estrogen levels in the plasma which hence will cause therapeutic failure. Another factor of the elimination interaction is the drug transporter proteins. So drug transporter protein can be found at many other tissues. The most common drug transporter protein is the P-glycoprotein which can be found in various tissues. It is a large cell membrane protein that acts as an efflux pump that exporting drugs into the urine, into the bowel and into the intestinal lumen. This, this pumping action of p glycoprotein can be induced or can be inhibited by some other drugs.